Uh, let's see. Let's try. Well, we could do this, but it's not real necessary because we already know the result, right? So it would just be a matter of plugging and chugging at this point. You could plug in. Uh, if you know the radius and you know the magnitude of the magnetic field, we could solve for I. Well, let's just do it anyway. What the heck? Wake people up. And we should all be getting answer number four, 1.5 amps. Just coming from, I mean, at this point, we already know the result here. You know the magnetic field. You know that you're multiplying by the circumference, okay, and then dividing by the constant to give you the uh, char uh, current enclosed. And uh, it's going to be just B times 2 pi R over mu naught. And that should give you one point. If you plug everything in, it should give, give you 1.5 amps. Okay. Let's try a more advanced application of this. So this looks kind of ugly, but it's j think about what it means to take this path integral. What we've drawn here, first of all, this isn't a box. It's just a loop. Okay. So you're, what, the, what we're drawing here is just a rectangular loop. And it just so happens that we're measuring the magnetic field at locations along this uh, rectangular loop. Okay? On the le right side of the rectangular loop, everywhere along that part of the path, the magnetic field is B2, and it's pointing directly to the right. The magnitude of B2 is uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 4 Tesla. On the top, the magnetic field is pointing at this angle. The angle from uh, the path theta is 30 degrees. And the magnitude of B1 is 2 times 10 to the minus 4 Tesla. Same thing, similar thing over here. On the left side, B2 is pointing to the left, same magnitude. And B1 is kind of reverse direction, but it has the same magnitude. And it's making the same angle with the path. Okay. Think about calculating B dot DL. Think about what that means. We're just summing up over this closed path all the B dot DL. So you're going to have to think about each piece of the path and what the magnetic field dotted with the path, the, the path vector okay, uh, is on that particular segment. Just for um, Consistency, let's assume the path is counterclockwise once again. Okay? So assume a counterclockwise direction to your path. See if you can find the net B dot DL over that closed path. Right. Okay, so we're running out of time here. So I think we'll we'll pick this up next time, but let's let's just map this out, okay, because I saw a lot of blank faces here. It's a path integral, okay? So again, this, is, this isn't a box or not a surface. It's just a path. And you have to think about each segment of the path, okay? So let's look at this segment here. Here's a path, and we cho we're choosing counterclockwise. So this segment of the path is going up like that. So it has uh, a length, let's see, the height is 0.2 meters, right? So, gotcha. Uh, so 0.2 meters, we have a delta L. That's going to be what vector? How would I write that as a vector? Zero, point two, zero. Okay. The magnetic field is in the positive x direction, right? So we have uh, B2 is 1 times 10 to the minus 4, 0, 0. When I take the B dot DL on just that segment of the path, what am I going to get? Zero. And therefore, what am I going to get over here, too? Zero. So the only thing that's going to contribute to this path integral are the top and the bottom. And we'll, we'll do that calculation next time. Okay?